Guys, I'm really happy to have uh, Senator Ted Cruz joining me on the podcast. Uh, you know Ted Cruz, but by way of background, he was at the Department of Justice and the FTC during the Bush administration. He's the former Solicitor General of Texas, um, and now, of course, U.S. Senator from Texas. Uh, Ted, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think we met in 2012 when I released the Obama film, uh, and you and your team had bought a theater out in Houston to show the movie. Was that am I am I remembering right? You know, I think that's right, that that's the first time we met. I, look, I was a fan of yours long before then, but I think that's the first time we met in person. Ted, let's, uh, I want to ask you about a bunch of issues going on in the news today, but may, maybe I'll start by asking you to take a little bit of a step back here because we've seen a radicalism on the part of the Biden administration from day one. And maybe at the beginning they thought, let's see what we can get away with. But they've yep. been noticing that their polls have been nosediving and plummeting. Their policies are unpopular. And yet they've been pushing ahead with a seemingly brazen and reckless indifference. How do you explain what would normally seem to be just politically obtuse behavior? What is it? What are the Democrats trying to do here? Look, I think what has happened is is Biden is scared of the left wing in his party, that 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 all of the anger, all of the energy in the Democratic Party is on the radical left. It's it's, it's with the socialists. It's with the extremists. And and those are the, the, the people with pitchforks and, and, and torches coming after them right now. And it's a dynamic that plays out in the Senate, too, where where. The agenda is being driven by Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and AOC. And, and a lot of the Democratic senators recognize, OK, this stuff's pretty loopy, but they just don't have the courage to stand up to them. They're so scared of their left wing that that and I think Biden has made a political determination. You know, most of Biden's career, he's tried to carve out something of a course as, as a centrist moderate. That's that's certainly how he ran last year as a reasonable centrist moderate. And I think he's just made a political calculation that the angry left gets what they want. And, and, and it, uh, I think that that has some short term logic and that it avoids, you know, Chuck Schumer's scared of being primary from the left in the Democratic primary. But I think long term, I mean, you know, the policies that they're embracing are insane. And, and, and I think that's the reason 2022 is going to be a very, very good. I think it's going to be a phenomenal election year. And I think 2024 is going to be a phenomenal election year because they are going to such an extreme radical place that it's, it, it's far out of, out of line with where the American people are. Now, there's a little bit of a craziness, not just in politics right now, but I would say even in the country more generally. And do you think that uh, this diagnosis of submitting or succumbing to the far left is also happening, let's say, in corporate America and in the military and other yes. sectors that have previously been somewhat immune to the contamination of the far left? But, you know, why would General Milley, who doesn't look like he's a far leftist himself, why would the head of Delta Air Airlines or American Airlines, who presumably aren't Antifa types. So aren't we aren't you supplying here a little bit of a broader analysis of something that's happening, not just in politics, but more broadly in society? Yeah. Yeah. Look, those are great examples. Um, and let's take the three examples you teed up, because I know all three of those individuals quite well. I've spent a lot of time with all three of them. Um, there are structural reasons this is happening uh, with regard to General Milley. Um, I don't think he's a leftist. Uh, I, I think he is political and he he responds. Look, I've been in the Oval Office multiple times with General Milley. With Donald Trump, and he would happily kiss Trump's behind. He had no qualms at all about kissing Trump's behind. I think he's political and whoever his boss is, that's the team he's on at that moment. Um, I met General Milley when he was a three star general. He was the commander of Fort Hood in Texas. And, and I mean, that's when I got to know General Milley. Um, I think the woke nonsense he's embracing now is just the reality that Joe Biden's president and, and he's interested in staying chairman of the Joint Chiefs. And so if if doing that is required, putting on the woke uniform and saluting, that's what he's doing. 
you look at corporate America, and it's a little bit of a different dynamic. So the CEOs of, of Delta and America, neither one of them are leftists. But what has happened is the left has seized control of institutions in our society. And the, the media is one of them. Universities are another of them. Uh, Hollywood is another of them. You're, you're battling at all these terrains. Corporate America is their newest victim, their newest captive. And, and what they've done, so I had the CEO of, of American Airlines in my office last week, and, and, and I had some, some very direct and very harsh words for Americans' recent wokeness. His answer was very straightforward. He said, look, he was getting hammered from his own employees, from his shareholders. And what has happened, so the left, they've organized databases of left-wing employees at every big company, of shareholders at every big company. And they hammer these companies with emails. So, so CEOs are terrified of their own employees. And part of the problem is a lot of these employees are the 20-something woke kids who came out of universities where, where cancel culture was being born. And we kind of thought it was cute and stupid. And, and look at these stupid little kids that want to cancel everything. Well, now they're 20 somethings and they're at the companies. And, and, and when, when the company says or does anything, they, they bring out the torches and pitchforks and these CEOs are risk averse, they're scared. And, and the problem for corporate America is right now, it is a rational cost benefit analysis to give into the mob. They're doing it because, you know, why do they go take a position? You know, why does Delta Airline take the position? because they've got their own employees emailing and mad. And why are you supporting these horrible racists? Are you a racist too? And these CEOs are like, oh crap. I, I, I. When, when you have the mob outside your house wanting to burn it down, the natural instinct, particularly for people that are not very political is look, give the mob what they want so they leave me alone. Yeah, and the although left has organized the mob and, and it's working. Yeah, I think what you're describing, though, is a mob that is inside and outside the house, isn't it? In other words, yes. the CEO yes. could normally say, I'm the CEO, you're the employee. So you listen to me, I don't listen to you. But I think they know that these young uh, millennials are going to go running to the New York Times and the New York Times will do an expose about why the CEO is a racist. And that's what he's really afraid about is the scissors like motion of the internal and external factors working together. Yes, but it's, it's more organic than that, because it's not even the New York Times. Look, some of this dynamic, I, I know you've read Barry Weiss's phenomenal resignation letter where she describes these 20 something kids that have destroyed the New York Times. I mean, look, they fired the editor of the opinion pages of the New York Times because he dared to publish an op ed from a sitting Republican senator. I, I mean, it was asinine. And by the way, the editor is a knee-jerk liberal who disagreed with every word in the op-ed. The op-ed wasn't even particularly good. I didn't, didn't happen to agree with it, but it was fine. You know, Tom Cotton wrote an op-ed. And, and the kids at the New York Times were like, my God, you platformed a fascist. And he gets fired. It, it, it's not even the New York Times will write an expose. It's Twitter will get mad at you. It, 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 it's the woke Twitter warriors just chirping at each other. And... People are scared. You, you know, I was out in California last summer and uh, with some friends, you know, Heidi's, Heidi's from California, family's out there. And we were with a family friend who's a kindergarten teacher who was saying, she said, I am scared to speak. There is a McCarthyist wind in the air. And if I say the wrong thing, I'm fired. My life, and she said, I just, I just don't say anything. And I think there are a lot of people that are terrified. And these CEOs, they they're they're all cowards that they're terrified of the mob calling them racists and that's of course the number one card the left has is if you're not a marxist you're a racist if you're not a socialist you're a racist if if you don't support open borders and chaos you're a racist if you don't support uh abolishing the police and let and letting criminals go you're a racist whatever they want they accuse you of being a racist, and today's CEOs are terrified of that, and so they're giving in. And it's 
it's the same dynamic. I do think you have a good insight here, Dinesh. Democratic senators giving into the mob and CEOs giving into the mob, they're just scared. They're, they're scared and they're cowards. And, 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 and what the right hasn't done that we need to do, we need to change the cost benefit analysis. And, and that's something I've spent a lot of time thinking about, talking to various thinkers about. Look, for the hard left, it's fine. They're going to do what they're going to do. But for the utterly apolitical CEO running a business, we need to make it so the cost and benefit of, do I give in to the woke mob? The cost is at least as great as the benefit of it. Right now, it's an easy decision. We need to change that calculus. When we come back, uh, I'll pick this up with Ted Cruz. Um in a minute.